na 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 yield. Na 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 shield. Hello my baby, hello my honey, hello my ragman gal. Send me a kiss my wife, baby my heart's on fire. In this special review, we look at the Captain America Hot Toys figure from Sideshow Collectibles. Obviously, as the box says, this is the Civil War version of Captain America. Only the relatively cool movies, which have been made recently, could win people over into thinking that Captain America, the goofy-looking Marvel comic book character, would make a figure that is in high demand. Yet somehow they did it. The sideshow figures are high-end collectibles, supposedly with a superior level of detailing and features. We'll see about that. The box is simple and rectangular, enclosed with a slip cover that features the let's go get them scene from the film. The art wraps around the box from front to back, with the other members of Cap's team shunted ignominiously to the rear, where all of the boring copyrights, logos, and warnings were dumped. Only Black Widow was allowed to share the front of the box with Captain America. On the side of the box, they put her arm and her hand, which for some reason seems to be holding Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver. Removing the slip cover shows the blue box underneath with a clear plastic window showing off the very expensive contents. The Captain's shield symbol is on the side of the box, with Captain America 1-6 scale figure on the other side. That is repeated here, and on the back there is also a list of credits bizarrely titled Cast and Crew like the toy makers were part of some feature film they wish. Creative producers, product designers, the people who sculpted the heads, the people who sculpted the accessories, supervisors, blah blah blah. Anywho, the box isn't what you paid truckloads of cash for, so let's unbox Captain America and review him properly. And here is a sideshow Hot Toys Captain America out of his box. What sets this figure apart from, say, the 12-inch Legends version in stores is the astonishing level of detail. Everything is more realistic, right down to the skin tone and texture. The paint applications are almost flawless, and so is the intricate sculpting, especially on sections like the face. The detail is much more realistic than any store-bought figure you might see. The eyes, the nose, everything seems to have accurately captured the look of the characters as depicted in the feature films. Captain America stands a little over 12 inches tall, and the figure has a cloth costume rather than molded plastic detailing from top to bottom. And unlike the bunchy, cheesy cloth items that come on store-bought figures, uh, Hot Toys Captain America's costume is extremely well detailed and crafted, cut and formed from several different pieces, and each cunningly joined together in subtle ways, it seems like one piece woven throughout, even though it isn't. It has buckles and straps all over the place, each neatly stitched and well detailed. I wish all action figures could have this level of detail, but it does come with drawbacks, as will be seen later. But I dweedle my non-existent lips in astonishment at the attention given to the accuracy of this figure. As display pieces go, I've yet to see a better. The Cap'n America figure comes with a load of accessories with which he may be decked out. Starting with the obvious, the Cap'n comes with his signature shield. It's hard to tell if it's actually made of metal or if it's just vac metal plastic, but it feels very solid and heavy. On the inside of the shield are two strap sets, each of which can be unbuckled from the shield to allow the figure's arms to slip through. Even the straps are individually molded, 
and the buckles have individual teeth to insert into the clips. Now that's fine detailing. There is the helmeted head, which comes with two lower face sections, each of which is held in place by a clever magnet setup. Simply pull the front of the face from the helmet, ooh, creepy, and you may replace that face section with any one of the two that it comes with. Tuck the edges underneath the softer plastic at the helmet edge, and say hello to Mr. Angry Eyes. I admit that I am impressed. Even the teeth seem to have been individually molded, and they are nice and shiny. The belt is also a separate accessory that can be removed, and the instruction booklets give you instructions on how to remove the belt. But they also say it is not recommended to take off the belt. Uh, okay. There is a crossbones helmet tossed in, although there does not appear to be any way for the captain to wear it. It looks like you might be able to prize the helmet apart at some sort of seam running across the back, but I think rather it is merely meant for the captain to hold aloft while saying, alas, poor crossbones, I knew him well. The helmeted head can be ripped off. Although, take extreme care when doing so to avoid damaging the cloth parts. Ha 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 ha! I have defeated Captain America! And you may replace your headless cap'n with a helmetless version of the head. You will notice a ball socket tucked inside the cloth parts of the tunic. Take the helmetless version and insert the ball socket very carefully, not to bunch the cloth underneath. It's impressive that these sculptors actually managed to make the helmetless head appear like the face of the actor from the movies. Normally they look very gormless and flat and plasticky, but this one looks realistic. Even the hair has an astonishing level of detail on it, looking actually like hair instead of molded plastic. There's excellent detailing even on such things as the ears and the nostrils. <coughs> The figure comes with seven different hands. There are the two balled up fists. There are also two slightly open hands for holding the shield straps on either arm. There are two open palm hands for slapping his enemies in the face. And there is one pointing pull my finger hand. To swap out the hands, simply rotate and pull them loose from the little nub at the end of the arm. Then take your replacement hand and squeeze it onto the end of the little plastic nub at the end of the forearm. The hands are made of a softer, more flexible plastic and may wear out if used too much, but admittedly people who buy figures like this don't buy them for rough or repeated handling. They take care each time they even do so much as approach their figures. There are also what seem to be two replacement hand ball sockets, presumably to use in case either one on the arms breaks when replacing a hand. That's thinking ahead, Sideshow. The box also includes an easy-to-assemble display base with a raising and lowering strut with wires that hook under his groin to support and keep him from falling over too easily. It looks uncomfortable, but admit it. When you pay this much for a figure, you want something besides hope standing between it and gravity. Also included in the kit is what appears to be a tiny plastic screwdriver, the purpose for which is unknown. The box also contains this little plastic widget, which is used to mount the shield onto the cap'n's back. Simply pop the strap accessory off of the back of the shield, insert the plastic widget in its place, and then use the widget to hook the shield over the metal part of his little strappy harness thing. Like so. And lastly, this handy instruction booklet for teaching you how to do such things as have the shield slung across his back, threading it through the straps for his arms, and so on and so forth. 
Getting your cap'n to wield the shield, the instructions say that it is easier to insert the strap into the hand loose at first, and then attach it to the shield. Uh, the process is fiddlier than you might think. But once it's done, the cap'n will hold his shield quite securely. The figure is well articulated, but not as much as you might think. The head will spin 360 degrees in its ball socket. It will also lean a fair degree forwards and backwards. The shoulders will rotate and splay in their sockets. I don't know what kind of joint they may have used, but there's no way that I'm going to risk ripping this apart to find out. The cloth on the arm appears to be seamed below the clavicle joint and should allow for free spinning, but these shoulder straps tend to catch, and so I tend to stop trying once those straps flex too much. There is a double-jointed elbow, but I find myself stopping the bend as soon as I see the cloth flex to the point of stretching. The hands will rotate in their sockets, and there is also a hinge joint inside them, but the plastic cuffs at the end of the hands and the cloth at the ends of the arms seems to inhibit that motion to the point where you can hardly do it at all. The upper body appears to be flexible, but again, once I hear the cloth parts starting to creak, I tend to stop. The waist will also rotate, but springs back when you let go. The upper body costume and the pants are separate pieces which are covered by this belt. The upper body costume parts seem to bunch a lot when rotating the waist, so exercise caution. The hips will rotate forwards and backwards, and splay in and out to a fair degree. There is also an upper thigh rotation, and they seem to have given enough cloth around the hips to allow a range of motion without the risk of stretching the cloth too much. Don't go crazy with it though. The knees are double jointed, and the booted feet will also rotate in their sockets and tilt forwards and backwards on a ball socket hinge. They will also tilt in and out to allow for wider angle stances. Each joint has a decent amount of stiffness, so the figure can hold its poses into which they are placed. The shin sections of the boots seem to be separate from the feet, and are made of softer plastic, with a cuff that covers the ankle joints quite nicely. Hey, get me! I can run faster than an SUV! Hail Hydra! For size comparison, here is the Sideshow Cap'n America next to the Legends Build-A-Figure Hulkbuster. Here is Sideshow Cap'n America next to the Legends Valkyrie. And here is Sideshow Captain America next to a box of stovetop stuffing. Now that's American. While the figure has many points of articulation, the sheer cost of the item makes it so that you don't want to pose it too dynamically for fear of popping a seam or snapping a buckle. The collectors who buy these pieces will most likely pick out one pose that they like best, set the figure in it, and leave it that way. They may change it up once or twice a year, but for the most part they will simply admire these figures in all their ultra-detailed glory. There is very little to gripe about with these high-end figures. The only drawbacks are that it has an extremely high price tag, and as such, you will wind up treating it as if it were made of spun glass. This means that while it may have the potential for dynamic posing, your inner tightwad will not allow it. But as display figures go, the Sideshow Hot Toy 1 6th scale figures are tough to beat, and Captain America has well earned 9 out of 10 deaths. Hey, get me! I can outrun SUVs too! If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy and tell me I'm your own!